Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Adara Europis Synagogue. It was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. The black presence in the lands of the Bible, page 15. Universal Center for Renovation. Welcome to our channel where we do a little research into the history and archaeology of the children of Israel. In this episode, we're going to go into a little history of the Israelites pertaining to writers and authors from the past who brought out a little information pertaining to the Israelites. And this episode is called J.A. Rogers and the Secret History of Israel. Hebrew slaves in Egypt from the tombs of ancient Egypt. So this channel is really dedicated into researching our history. So the first book we're going to go into is Our Living Bible by Michael Aviona and Emil G. Kraling. So what we're looking for first is on page 43. And here we have a picture from a tomb in ancient Egypt of the Hebrews in bondage in Egypt. A painting from the tomb of Rekemir, 15th century B.C. And the caption reads, And made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick. Exodus chapter 1 verse 14. This is some history of Israel. From the book of Exodus. I'm reading from the Net Bible. Exodus chapter 1 verse 1. These are the names of the sons of Israel who entered Egypt. Each man with his household entered with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar. Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, all the people who were directly descended from Jacob, numbered 70. Exodus chapter 1 verse 7. The Israelites, however, were fruitful, increased greatly, multiplied, and became extremely strong, so that the land was filled with them. Then a new king, who did not know about Joseph, came to power over Egypt. He said to his people, Look at the Israelite people, more numerous and stronger than we are. Come, let us still wisely with them. Otherwise, 
they will continue to multiply. And if a war breaks out, they will ally themselves with our enemies and fight against us and leave the country. So they put four men over the Israelites to oppress them with hard labor. As a result, they built Pithom and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more they multiplied and spread. As a result, the Egyptians loathed the Israelites. And they made the Israelites serve rigorously. They made their lives bitter by hard service with mortar and bricks. And by all kinds of service in the fields. Every kind of service the Israelites were required to give was rigorous. When you start to research the history of Israel, one of the best scholars in the subject matter is a historian by the name of J.A. Rogers. Joel Augustus Rogers was born September 6, 1880. He died March 26, 1966. He was a Jamaican-American author, journalist, and historian who focused on the history of Africa as well as the African diaspora. After settling in the United States in 1906, he lived in Chicago and then New York City. He became interested in the history of African Americans in the United States. His research spanned the academic fields of history, sociology, and anthropology. He challenged prevailing ideas about scientific racism and the social construction of race, demonstrated the connections between civilizations and traced achievements of ethnic Africans, including some with mixed European ancestry. He was one of the earliest popularizers of African and African American history in the 20th century. Wikipedia, J.A. Rogers. Joe Augustus Rogers, the author of Sex and Race, Volume 1, 2, and 3, and Nature Knows No Color Line, and many, many other books. But to learn just a little bit more about J.A. Rogers, let's turn to two modern scholars. African Zion, Studies in Black Judaism, Edith Bruder and Tudor Parfit, from Cambridge Scholars Publishing. This is a direct quote from African Zion, Studies in Black Judaism, Marcus Garvey, J.A. Rogers, and George G. M. James, among many others, considered themselves to be the only true physical descendants of ancient Israel. I believe the works of J. A. Rogers was initially written for people of upper and middle class status who were intellectuals, businessmen, lawyers, etc., who were part of an international brotherhood of men, who were the children of the transatlantic slaves, either as bondmen or freemen. They remembered their pre slavery history and sought to preserve it for their children. First, quietly, and when the time was right, in a more open forum. At first, I believe his books and other writers were recommended reading for students at the historical black colleges and universities because the free people of color, children, 
congregated at these institutions. These records were supposed to instill self-esteem and a sense of citizenship and community when scientific racism and eugenic science was on the rise. They couldn't control the public narrative concerning who they were as a people, but within their own circles, they could remember past glories. Sex and race, Negro, Caucasian, mixing, in all ages and all lands, by J.A. Rogers, Volume 1, The Old World. Chapter 9. Were the Jews originally Negroes? European painters and sculptures, by their use of white models to typify biblical characters, have falsified tremendously the physiognomy of the ancient Jews. We are familiar with the scores of portraits offered to us as Christ. But do good Christians ever stop to think what he really looked like? Josephus, first century historian, described him as dark-skinned and simple in appearance. And the Helosis suppressed portion of his work. Solomon too is portrayed as a white man, though in the songs attributed to him, he speaks of himself as black but comely. Christ on the throne, 18th century Greece. Abraham Sacrifice, an icon from Russia, 1778. But the earliest Jews were in all probability Negroes. Abraham, their ancestor, is said to have come from Chaldea, and the ancient Chaldeans were black. The Chaldees, say Godfrey Higgins, were originally Negroes. As was said too, relics of prehistoric Negroes have been discovered in this region, in southern Iraq, Chaldea. Sex and Race, Volume 1 Tacitus, 80 AD, says, that many Romans of his time believed that the Jews originated in Ethiopia, having left there to escape oppression from Cephas, the king. Winston, translator of Josephus' history of the Jews, asks with regard to this, one would wonder how Tacitus or any other heathen could suppose the African Ethiopians under Cepheus, who are known to be blacks, could be the parents of the Jews, who are known to be whites. If some Romans believe that the Jews were of Ethiopian ancestry, there must certainly have been black Jews in Rome. Sex and Race, Volume 1 Moses himself was black. Sex and Race, Volume 1 Moses in the burning bush, Exodus chapter 3, 1 through 17. Dera Europis Seneca. Turning to modern anthropology, one finds confirming evidence. Razzo says, The entire Semitic and Hermetic population of Africa has a mulatto character, which extends to the Semites outside of Africa. Sex and Race, Volume 1. Frederick Retzel, born August 30th, 1844, 
and died August 9th, 1904, was a German geographer and ethnographer. Notable for first using the term Lebensraum, living space, in the sense that the National Socialists later would Wikipedia. Okay, so the Hamites and the Semites or Shemites of North Africa had a mulatto character or phenotype. Let's look into that. Woman from North Africa, Morocco, from the works of Jean Bensonat. In the Sudan, Upper Egypt, and North Africa, there are Jews whose color and features are indistinguishable from Negroes. The Jews outside Africa retain large numbers of them, the Negroid traits, Sex and Race, Volume 1. Jean Bensensenat, born September 24th, 1902, died July 27th, 1992. Born as Jean Girard, was a French painter, documentary photographer, and self-trained ethnographer, active mainly during the 1930s and 1940s in the French protectorate in Morocco. Jean Bessensenat and French President Albert Lebrun at the exposition Types et Costumes du Maroc in Paris, 1937. Or types and costumes of Morocco. In another book of Jean Messinat, Arabic and Berber Jewry from Morocco. In the Sudan, Upper Egypt, and North Africa, there are Jews whose color and features are indistinguishable from Negroes. Sex and Race, Volume 1. Born Jean Gerard, Jean Vincent Senat, 1902 to 1992, trained at the Ecole des Arts Decoratives in Paris. He began his career as a painter, also studying French regional costumes. During a trip to Morocco in 1934, he took photographs of traditional dress. With a grant from the foreign ministry, he stayed there again in 1935 and 1936. Photographing men and women in different communities and carefully documenting their ceremonial dress. A set of four photo panels Judea of Morocco. A set of four photos panels is by Jean Bensonat, Judea of Morocco, France, 20th century. Jean Vincent Sanat particularly explored Morocco's southernmost regions, little affected by westernization, where Jewish communities sometimes present since antiquity intermingled with the Berber population. Taken during the French protectorate, his photographs show the close proximity to his subjects that enable him to combine both aesthetic 
and scientific concerns. They are irreplaceable testimony to Jewish culture in Morocco, particularly female costumes and jewelry, whose forms are sometimes the same as those of Muslim women. A set of four photo panels, Judea of Morocco, A set of four photo panels by Jean Benzancino, same as same man as Ben Sassanat, just spelled differently. Judea of Morocco, France, 20th century. Jews of Morocco. Now, this was really a bad guy, but Jay Rogers were or was documenting what these guys were writing about and what these guys were thinking. Hans Frederick Carr Gunther, born February 16th, 1891, died September 25th, 1968, was a German writer and advocate of scientific racism and a eugenicist in the Weimar Republic of Germany and the Third Reich. Dr. Hans Gunther in his Rassenkunde das Judischen Volk or Racial Science of the Jewish People does the same. His work is illustrated with portraits of Negroid Jews of Europe and elsewhere. Here we have a photograph left an Assyrian woman about 1300 BC, a type common among African Americans. Right, Negro bust of 1500 BC from Egypt. Munta think it was a Jew. From Sex and Race, Volume 1. 